this is mini lecture number three. And because the mini lectures are getting a little bit fast and ahead of what we're accomplishing in class, I'm just gonna pick up two loose ends in this mini lecture. So the first loose end I'm gonna pick up is if you go back to mini lecture number two and look at the whole second half of mini lecture number two um, and follow along in night sections 1.4 and 1.5 you'll see that when you're following along the, in night he uses the word average velocity and average acceleration a lot. And I want to explain to you why he's throwing that term average around right now. Okay, so let me just give you an example. Suppose you were six years old. Suppose you were one meter high. And then suppose when you were 16, you were already at the grand full height, 16 years old, you were at the grand full height of two meters, pretty big. We can compute a rate of change of height from this. And how do we do it? Well, we call this two meters, we call that height sub final. And we call this one meter, we call that h sub initial. And the change in the height is the final minus the initial, which is two meters minus one meter, which equals one meter. Meanwhile, we have a delta t. It took 10 years. Well, I'll be a little, just won't jump straight to the conclusion. Let's say, say a little slower. t final is 16 years. T initial is six years. T final minus T initial, which is delta T, is 16 years minus six years is 10 years. Okay, so delta H is one meter and delta T is 10 years. So that means that we can talk about the rate of change of height. And how do you get the rate of change of something? You take delta h and you divide by delta t and you just calculated those two. That was one meter divided by 10 years, which is equal to one tenth is 0 0.1 meters per year. Okay. Now, think about this a little more closely. What if you were really in a growth spurt at age six? By the time you were at age 16, you were starting to plateau out. That means you didn't really grow 0.1 meter per year. Maybe when you were down around six or seven, you were growing at 0.2 meters per year. And by the time you got to uh, age 16, it had nearly stopped. So that means that this thing that we just calculated, it's not your rate of change of height. It's your average rate of change of height averaged over that whole 10 years. So now you know why uh, Knight, when he is uh, talking about V, which you get by taking the difference of two positions and dividing by a delta T, and when he's talking about acceleration, when he's taking the difference of two velocities and dividing by a delta T, when he's talking about those two things, he over and over again uses the word average, and he's being precise. You do not yet know how to calculate instantaneous rates of change. You only know how to compute average rates of change over some finite time interval delta t. Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay, so that's why Knight throws around average so much. I think that would be a great time for you to pause and go review the previous mini lecture. Mini lecture number two, second half, when I went over 
1.4 and 1.5 on velocity and acceleration. And after you've done that, come back and we'll clean up one more loose end. Okay, here's the loose end I want to clean up. In both classes, I had a terrible time computing A plus B plus C and comparing it with A plus B plus C. I claim that these two things are equal, and I claim that this is called the associative property. At least I got commutativity right. That was easy. That was just showed you parallelograms. Uh, let's see if we can get this associativity thing to work. If this thing's going to work, it's supposed to work for any three vectors. So let's just draw three vectors. And I think the way, well, I'm not quite sure why I failed in class, whether I was actually making mistakes or whether I was just not drawing neatly enough. So how about I do three vectors there, and let's try to be really careful this time. A, B, C. There's three vectors. I just drew them. Now we're going to compute A plus B plus C and see what we get. And then later we're going to compute A plus B plus C and see what we get. Okay, so this one says that we're at the location of the parens on the left-hand side. It says you take B plus C first. Well, to take B plus C first, you have to take B and you have to take find, somehow get the tail of C over to the head of B. We have B, we want to add C to it. Okay. Well, that means I'm going to need some other color so I don't mess up my diagram too much. Let's show you this copy of C. Here's a copy. There's C. Let's just try to get a copy of C right there. Okay. I hope that's a good copy of C. Make sure the length's about right. Direction's about right. Looks good. There's my copy of C. And if that's now stuck there with its tail on the head of B, there I have B plus C. B plus C is this, apparently this vector right here. Okay, and then this left-hand side, still evaluating the left-hand side, this left-hand side says add A to that. Okay, we have B plus C, we need to add A to it. Okay, that's not so bad. Let's take B plus C. And add it to A. So I need to take, take B plus C. I need to faithfully make a copy of B plus C over here. It's about like that to me. That's good. That's my copy of B plus C. And here I still have A, so, so A plus, this copy of B plus C shows me, and I need one more new color, how about red? This shows me what my final result is. A plus B plus C. It's that vector. That's the left hand side. Now let's evaluate the right-hand side. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing except with the right-hand side. The right-hand side said first add B to A. Okay, I need to take a copy of B and I need to get it over to the head of A without messing it up. So B, about as far as I can stretch my fingers, head it over to the head of A and make a nice copy of it over there and so things don't get too messy. Let's once again use the green color for the second step. So there's B, there's my copy of B. Okay, there's A plus B. That really long vector is A plus B. Okay, and then I'm supposed to add C to that thing. Okay, 
So let's take a copy of C. Oh, and this time it's going to work. Let's take a copy of C and drag it up to here. And now I'm making a copy of C, and I'm going to use my a, a new color for my copy of C. Take this vector, drag it up to here. There's my copy of C. And what you can see, now that I've taken this copy of C and stuck it on the end of this thing that represented A plus B, A plus B plus C, A plus B plus C is the same as we got when we calculated the left hand side by first adding B plus C and then adding A. I will see you on Thursday.